Transcontinental Air Transport. They had the first coast-to-coast -coast air and train service in the United States. We left uh, New York so in the evening kind of on a sleeper imagine. train and rode to Columbus, Ohio. The next morning, you boarded a Ford Trimotor and flew all day to Waynoka, Oklahoma. That evening, you boarded another sleeper train and rode all night to Clovis, New Mexico. The next day, you boarded another Ford Trimotor and you ended up on the West Coast that evening. Two and a half days from New York to Los Angeles. Lindbergh uh, flew one of the very first airplanes. He was on the West Coast. He flew one of the Western Division Fords out to New Mexico to meet the train that was coming in on that first day. All right. All right. Flight number one. All right. Thank that, you. that man took our ticket one time. <laughs> hey! Flight one. Thank you. What's this plane like compared to others, in a nutshell? Oh, it's kind of like driving a 48 Kenworth uh, with no power steering. It's, uh, it's heavy on the controls, and uh, one of our other pilots says, uh, that airplane will do anything you want it to do when it's good and ready. And that's, that's kind of like, uh, that's a, it's a good description. Mm -hmm. And this, would you safe to say this is the first commercial airliner? It's the first all-metal multi-engine airliner built in the United States. It's not the first all-metal uh, uh, commercial airplane. Hugo Junkers in Germany uh, built the first all-metal uh, commercial airplane in, uh, at the end of World War I in Germany. And um, uh, if you compare Junkers' designs to this, to this airplane, there are similarities such as the corrugated skin. Um, that, was a, that was a Junkers feature. Uh, but a good feature, and it made the airplanes exceptionally strong.